Today we are going to be talking about criminals and how various societies dealt with them. In the medieval time, when food was scarce, the concept of a modern prison would be unthinkable. Imagine what a peasant who is struggling to put food on his family table would think about the fact that a criminal can be getting free housing, free food, free health care, and free clothing. So obviously that wouldn't have flown, even if it would have been possible during those times. So they had to do other methods in order to dissuade people from committing crime. Some of those methods included corporal punishment, amputations. Yes, they happened even in Europe. Branding people and then banishing them from the town or the city they grew up in. And the brand didn't necessarily have to be with an iron. It could also be the good old tar and feather. But there were even more extreme punishments, such as, uh, in my country, being sent to the mines. The mines was a hole in the ground. And the prisoners would go down. Then the ladder would be pulled up. And there would be no guards inside the mine. There was no law inside the mine. The only deal was that once every week, the salt, which the convicts mined, would be pulled up and they would get food in return. That's it. And it was a life sentence. So many people didn't make it. And of course, you then have the ultimate punishment, which was the death penalty, and that was a, a public spectacle uh, meant to also dissuade others from being criminals. It's like, if you do the crime, this is what happens to you. If you're a horse thief, if you uh, are a highwayman robber, this is what is going to happen to you. So uh, don't even think about doing it. So throughout medieval time, the purpose of punishing criminals was to A, separate the criminal from the law-abiding person, and B... Make absolutely sure that other people are being discouraged from following the criminal profession. But as time moves on and you go through the Industrial Revolution and now people have more food and it's becoming uh, uh, a lot more easy to, to feed and house people, the concept of a prison appears. And the concept of a prison still has the idea of separating the inmates from the law-abiding citizens, but the concept of rehabilitation is being introduced. Uh, and this is a Christian concept with the idea that if someone commits something bad, if they regret it, uh, they can be forgiven. And you now have the concept of reintroducing the person into society after they finish their sentence. And this is a key aspect of the prison system is the rehabilitation. And the other aspect, which is kind of being um, forgotten in modern times, it's the idea of suffering, because you still committed a crime, and there needs to be suffering for what you did. I mean, if you murdered someone, you need to suffer for that aspect. And the suffering isn't um, just to punish the person who has committed a crime, but it's also, again, to dissuade others from doing the crime. Because if the prisons would be actually better than life outside, like, for example, if the prison would be better than being homeless, then every single homeless person would try to go to prison. So you're trying to dissuade people from doing that, right? You want people to be afraid of going to prison so that they don't commit crime. Because obviously, if everyone were to commit crime, there aren't enough places in a prison to house the entire population of a country. So the role of the prison is not just punitive in measure, but it's also in an indirect way to, to convince people that, that would try to commit something that they shouldn't. Because if they do, they may up, end up in prison. There's a lot of uh, YouTube channels that I personally like with uh, ex-convicts who are trying to warn people that prison life isn't a good thing and why they should uh, turn away from a life of crime. But with that said, recently we have noticed um, a new way of thinking, a, a more progressive way of thinking, that of uh, the criminal being a victim of society. 
So we need more compassion and more understanding for the criminal, sometimes at the detriment of the victim. The victim is usually removed from the equation. It's removed from our hearts and replaced with like, but, but what about the criminal? Like, shouldn't we have empathy for him? Shouldn't we have compassion for him? Because at the end of the day, the criminal is a victim of society. And I made a video where I show that when you think that the criminal is a victim of society, with that line of thinking, you end up with society being the victim of criminals. So it might not be such a good way of thinking. But the question is, is this line of thinking something new? Is this line of thinking something that appeared recently? And the answer is no. And uh, in tomorrow's video, because I'm trying to keep this short, and I'm doing a little bit of teaser, experimenting with something, in tomorrow's videos, we're going to look at the root ideology, at least when it comes to Marxism, on why is it that Lenin thought that actual criminals can be, and in his words, I will quote, social allies. And it's important to make the distinction because in the Marxist view, there are two types of criminals. And uh, this is uh, true in my country during communism. We had two penal codes. So one of them was for ideological crime, which was the most severe one. And the other one was for like normal crime, you know, burglary, theft. And the social allies were the people that were committing the, the normal crime while the counter-revolutionaries were the people that were unforgivable and uh, they were next to impossible to rehabilitate and that's where punitive psychiatry comes in. And I, I will try to um, make a video tomorrow where I go more in depth into any of these, but it's very interesting to notice how societies have dealt with criminals through the course of time. And of course, I forgot to mention the gulags, and um, camps where, and this happens even today in some countries, where the prisoners are being forced to labor. So um, the country, the government wants cheap labor. They want to uh, not rehabilitate the prisoners, but they want to use them as slaves. And unfortunately, it still happens in some countries. I do consider that to be immoral because when the government relies on this type of labor at a systemic scale, then the government has the incentive to look for people and to start uh, lowering the bar uh, in order to have this quota filled. And I, and I do think it's uh, immoral. I don't think it's uh, something that is necessary in order to punish criminals. But anyway, right, uh, let me know what you think in the comment sections, and uh, I'm going to prepare to have a more in-depth video on how Lenin and Marxists uh, viewed the criminals and how they dealt with them and where the roots of the ideology that we need to be more compassionate with criminals came from. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.